Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Wasteland 1, the original classic. This game is old. Older than me, in fact. Originally released in 1988, this game was made during the early days of gaming. Although I enjoy some of the older games available, and I love a good RPG, this for me is probably the furthest back in gaming history that I've ever gone. And I'm excited. And somewhat scared. Wasteland 1, or Wasteland as it was originally known, was the game that the original Fallout series and setting was based on. In fact, Brian Fargo, director of Wasteland, went on to become the head of Interplay when they released Fallout 1 and 2. Now I'm going to warn you, I do not know what I'm doing. And I will struggle doing the basic simple tasks to do anything at first. If you're expecting optimal gameplay, or even competent gameplay, you are watching the wrong series. But if you want to join me on a wild romp through the wastelands, and a special piece of gaming history, then this is the series for you. So without further ado, let our adventure in the wasteland begin. So, this is the start screen, and as you can tell, it looks very dated. And... You know, it kind of gives you an idea of what the game's going to be like. Now, if you're wondering why there is already a game that has been created, it's because I actually managed to record about an hour of this before realising I'd got none of the game sounds. So, this is try to, shall we say. So, let's begin. I'm going to be Ted. And I'm going to overwrite Ted. So welcome to Wasteland. Wasteland 1, the original classic. And my god, does it look old. But I am very excited for this. So, let's enter this new location. Ranger Center. So we've got Hellraiser. Name, Hellraiser. Strength, 12. IQ, 14. Luck, 13. Speed, 9. Agility, 14. Dex, 15. Charisma, 11. Scoop, 1. Rank, Private. Max Con, 28. Dollars, None. Sex, Male. Nationality, US. And if we press next... And so he's currently using a crowbar but has a M M1911 A1 45 pistol with uh, eight clips, rope, canteen, crowbar, knife, hand mirror, and I'm guessing that's a match, or maybe some matches. And he's skilled in brawling, climbing, clip pistol, swim, perception, SMG, silent movement, acrobat, knife throw, and that's it. Those are his skills. Following that, we have Angela Death, whose strength is 8, whose IQ is 15, whose luck is 14, whose speed is 11, agility 10, dexterity 17, charisma 14, and scoop 
one. Rank private, max con, 27. Dollars, zero. Sex, female, nationality, US. She is using the VP91Z 9mm pistol with eight 9mm clips, rope canteen, crowbar, knife, hand mirror, and match. Uh, and she's got two in clip pistols, one in swim, one in perception, one in demolitions, one in confidence, one in assault rifle, one in alarm disarm, one in pick lock, one in safe crack, and one in medic. Uh... Okay, let's start that one again, shall we? Skills. The skills you possess weigh heavily in your success. Each character should have a slightly different repertoire, so the whole party benefit from a greater variety of skills. One character could specialize in gambling, lockpicking, and forgery, while another could excel in demolition, brawling, and climbing. Medical skills are something that more than one character should possess. All the skills in the world don't amount to anything if a character is flat on his back, too weak to use them. The character who, the, the more characters who possess medical savvy, the safer the party is. Since you must have a minimum IQ to be able to learn certain skills, the higher you, the higher your IQ, the more skills you get to choose from. You simply can't learn the more technical skills if you're not smart enough. Level. The level of your skill, the higher this is, the better you are. You can invest skill points in any skill as many times as you like. Each time you invest in a skill, the skill levels level goes up. Skills also improve as you use them, since the cost of each successive skill level rises dramatically. Improving a skill by using it is, che is a cheap, effective method of gaining skills by level. When creating a character, or when visiting a library, You'll see the total available skill points at the top of the screen. Your skill point value is the same as your initial IQ value. To select a skill, enter its number. If you make an error, you can start your selecting over again by pressing Control R. Press Escape to exit this character's profile entirely. IQ. The minimum IQ you must have to use this skill. PTS, how many skill points it will cost to acquire this skill. Initially, you can select a skill more than once. In fact, this is how you become more adept or advanced in levels at, at this skill. Once you select a skill, the point cost doubles as each, as each successive skill becomes more costly. Don't be stingy with your skill points when you're creating your characters. You'll have, a, have the chance to acquire more skill points as you move up in the ranks. See Getting Promoted for details on how you can accumulate skill points. You can save a few, if you'd like, since there are several special places outside of the Ranger Center where you can learn more skills. But keep in mind that picking skills at the Ranger Center is a one-shot deal. Once you leave, you can't come back and pick more. Below are the descriptions of the skills grouped according to their minimum IQ requirement. After each skill name is a number in parentheses. This is the number of skill points needed to buy the first level of that for that skill. Each successive level doubles the cost. So IQ 3, we've got Brawling. 1. Any fighter who can wander through a full-fledged bar without getting much more than a scratch is either very lucky or highly skilled in Brawling. The higher your skill in brawling, the more attacks you get per round in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Climb gives you the ability to climb over fences, up sheer cliff faces, and out of pits. Clip pistol, a must-have skill since your initial weapon issue will either be the 1911 A1 caliber or the VP 91Z 9mm automatic clip pistol. Without this skill, you won't be very accurate with the weapon or have much luck fixing it if it breaks. Oh, weapons can break in this. That's that's good to know. 
Knife fighting. When you fight with knives, this gives you an advantage to a skilled fighter over an unskilled one. Pugilism. One of the oldest forms of fighting. It teaches you how to dish out punches as well as avoid them. Handy for those close-up battles where your fists, where the fists start flying. Rifle. A good basic skill, since many of the weapons sold by raiders are serviceable M19 rifles. You'll rule the day you didn't pick up this skill as you look helplessly at the rifle you can't shoot accurately. And swim. The desert sands don't blanket the entire earth. This will come in ha This will come in hand in those spots where you have to swim. Knife throwing. A tricky skill that comes in handy when fighting gets heavy. You'll use up all your ammo and resort to throwing knives. Perception. Help the character find concealed items and notice when things are out of the ordinary. No one should be without it. IQ 9. Assault Rifle. 1. Where the, if you're using... So wait, what was, the, what was the previous one? Oh, that's just Rifle. So Assault Rifle. If you're using an AK-97 or the M1989A1 Assault Rifle, this skill helps you fire, load, and unjam it quickly. A skill that ranks up there with the importance with walking... Oh, in, they're up there in importance with walking and breathing. Act Weapon. Helps you recognize and use anti-tank weapons like the Law Rockets. A handy skill to have should you encounter something far tougher than your ranger instructors ever told you about. SMG lets a character control basic submachine guns like the Uzi or the Mac-17. May make a big difference when you're out of outnumbered three to one by bandits and who've decided that they want the gold from, uh, from your teeth. IQ-10, Acrobat. This skill for the Agile can get you out of a tough situation like leaping off bar counters while you're surrounded by a hostile crowd. Gamble, the skill that built Vegas. You'll do well in all games of chance and you'll also be able to spot a crooked game from a mile away. Picklock, this can get you into places where you want to go but where others don't want you to go. Silent movement, this helps you move unnoticed past guard posts. Past a guard. This helps you move unnoticed past a guard post, making it tough for enemies to catch up with you. Confidence. For an already charismatic person, good confidence can enable one to talk um, to talk to a miser out of his fortune. It's particularly useful when getting information from people who are suspicious of you. Sleight of hand. A thieving skill that lets you perform sleight of hand tricks, perfect for when you need to amaze those you meet. Demolitions teaches you how much of an explosive substance you can use without blowing yourself up. Seems quite useful. Help uh, forgery helps you recognize or create forged documents. Someday you might you you may you might just need to whip up a security pass to get by some vigilant guards. Alarm disarm. Trains you to recognize and disable alarms. If you want to get into a place without getting caught, this is a good skill to have. Bureaucracy. Even through the most civilized, most of civilization, even though most of civilization has ended with the bomb, an inordinate number of petty bureaucrats manage to survive. This helps you deal with them, so you can get what you want. IQ 15 is bomb disarm. Allows you to defuse most. Uh, most explosive devices. Medic, a vital skill that lets your character stabilize a badly wounded comrade so he or she has a chance to recover. Safe crack. An experienced practitioner of this act of this art can open safes sealed even before the Holocaust. Cryptology gives you a talent to encode and decode messages, useful in helping you determine what a password might be. Seventeen. Metallur met met metallurgy. Increases your ability to spot and identify, spot, identify, and work with some basic metals. Interesting. So, Thrasher. Here we go. Attributes and personal statistics. 
The first screen lists the characters' attributes and other miscellaneous personal statistics. The ability to over uh, strength, the ability to overpower enemies, or to lift, move, and break items. This is important in hand-to-hand -hand combat and in physical tasks such as breaking down doors. Intelligence: how well a character thinks and solves problems. This probably the, this is probably the most important attribute because it determines which and how many skills a character may master. Certain skills can only be ma can only be mastered by characters with an IQ of a certain level or above. Characters start with skill points equal to their IQ, and during the course of the game, you'll definitely want to raise your IQ. Luck. Lucky characters tend to find more things and avoid more damage than than unlucky ones. Lucky all. Luck also improves your odds in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Speed. How quickly you move, which helps you escape tight situations. Agility. How deftly you move. High agility enhances your acrobatic ability, so you can do things like dodge blows and jump on tables. The higher this value, the better you'll perform in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They seem to have a big thing about jumping on tables. I feel like that may come up. I'm going to jump on a table by the end of this game, I assure you. Dex. Ability to master fine movement, like picking locks or aiming weapons. Dexterity is very important in combat and extremely useful in mastering the thiefly arts. Charisma. This attribute lets you know how likeable or persuasive a character is. Although it may like seem like a trivial trait, it might well make the difference between life and death as you try to convince someone that you're, a trust that you're trustworthy. Charisma also affects how an NPC will react to you when you want to hire him or trade equipment. Skill points. When you first create a character, this value is identical to IQ. The more skill points you have, the more skills you can learn. You can acquire more skill points during the game. See skills for details. Rank. Each character starts out as a private. As you acquire experience points, you can radio back to the Ranger Center for a field promotion. Each time you're promoted, your rank changes. Your maximum constitution goes up by two points, and you get an additional two points to invest in any attribute. Rank does not affect how orders are given or taken, since your characters are equal member are equal members of a team. A high rank, however, could impress civilians enough so that you so you can get into places where regular folks can't go. Maximum Constitution. The higher this is, the more of a beating you can take before you die. This value is the same as max as max on the on-screen statistics. Dollar is the total cash this character is carrying. Sex. This only affects sex only affects what bathroom he or she can access has access to. Nationality. Choose from U.S., Russian, Mexican, Indian, or Chinese. P. Pool. Press P to command all party members to pull their cash and give it to this character. D. Div. Cash. Div cash. Press D to have this character evenly distribute his cash amongst all the party members. If you have disbanded into several groups, only those in the same group as the character who is dividing his cash will share, uh, will share in the wealth. And then there is no question mark for the other one, so let's have a look at Thrasher. Thrasher. Name, Thrasher. Strength, 17. IQ, 10. Luck, 11. Speed, 12. Agility, 16. Dex, 9. Charisma, 8. Scoop, 1. Rank, Private. Max Con, 34. Dollars, 0. Sex, Male. Nationality, US. And then we've got... And he has an M1, M1911A1 45 caliber pistol. And usual stuff there. He has two in brawling, one in knife fight, one in clip pistol, one in swim, one in perception, one in AT weapon, and one in gamble. So if I go, say... No, I can't. Uh, all the things are picked for me already, aren't they? Because that's scoop. I feel like I'd need to spend it, but I don't know how. And then we finish with Snake Vargas. Strength 10, IQ 17, Luck 12, Speed 13, Agility 9, Dex 13, Charisma 12, Scoop 1. Rank Private, Max Con 31, 
dollars zero sex male nationality mexican he is also using the vp 991z 9mm pistol and has the standard stuff he can brawl he's got a bomb disarming clip pistol swim perception rifle bureaucracy medic metallurgy metallurgy So Hellraiser, oh no, Hellraiser, strength 12, but he's using a crowbar, he doesn't have knife fight, no he does have, he's got knife throw, he hasn't got knife fight. So I think I'm just going to go with the basic squad, so let's begin. Right. Brian Fargo, an In Exile Entertainment re uh, release of Wasteland. The original Wasteland is copyrighted 1986 to 1988 by Interplay Productions, Inc. Wasteland is trademark of In Exile Entertainment, Inc. Written by Alan Pavish, IBM version by Michael Quads. Place, Earth, year 1998. Status, DEFCON 1. Diplomatic solution to the world's problems have failed, and war erupts as some madmen press ahead with their insane dreams. Current condition. High concentrations of radiation produce random storms and mutations. Somehow life continues in the wastelands. Entering Ranger Center. Okay. So. I don't know what our objective is, but I'm going to go up here to this place, because this looks like a place. Entering High Pool. Would you like to enter the new location? Yes. You are in the desert north of the settlement of High Pool. Right. Can I do anything with these trees? Uh, use. Who's got climb? You've got climb. Nothing happens. You can't climb a tree. That's a shame. The fields near you are watered by the, a canal that gets its water from the creek. South of you are two-story adobe, adobe buildings that resemble dorms. This is a dorm for teens. Nothing much of interest here. This is a dorm for teens, nothing much of interest here. And this is also a dorm for teens, nothing much of interest here. This is a dorm for teens, nothing much of interest here. This is a wall. The entry is cool. A store counter is nearby and the room beyond looks like a gaming hall. A name is painted on the door. Mr. Jumbo. The door is locked. Can I... Right, I'm going to save. No, I don't want to quit the game. And then I'm going to use... Is it Thrasher? I don't think Thrasher had the skill. Um... No, he didn't. Um... Snake, do you have the picklock skill? Nope. Hellraiser, do you have the picklock skill? You've got silent move and brawling, but you don't have picklock. Angela, do you have the picklock skill? You do have the picklock skill. Uh oh. Hey, what do you think you're doing to the door? Angle yells the angry juvies. The door is open. Use Angela Death skill confidence. Nothing happens. I can't. You see a bed to the west and a cluttered desk to the east. 
this, uh, you see several handwritten notes on the desk. One note is cash amount, is cash amounts with the rail, no, uh, rail nomads. Another outlines sneak attack plans against the desert marauders. This last one seems, this last note seems odd since it clearly assumes only two attackers. Yeah, the, this last note seems odd, since it, it clearly assumes only two attackers against many. One note remind uh, one note is a reminder to put tra a trap door over the cave across the creek. Another is about hydrophobia. You see a bed to the east, and a thing to the west. This bed looks like a scum pit. Nice. <laughs> this is a dorm for teens. Nothing much of interest here. I have a feeling they are all dorms for teens. There's a lot of teens around here. Enter the infirmary. Uh, no, I don't need to go to the infirmary. This looks like a machine workshop. Old machinery is nearby, and there's a cot in the back. This big contraption is a pump. Is a patchwork machine. You recognise a pump, lime crusted, uh, uh, a pump, lime crusted pipes go under the floor. Uh, use. Do we have no. Uh, what about tribute? You're smart, snake. Vargas, Attribute, IQ, here. No, wait. So, do that. Use Snake Vargas, skill. No, it's not skill. It's an attribute, IQ, that way. You just you, you did use. This is a water purification device. It looks broken. Gaping hole in the sun, uh, beside the pumps leads you to think this could be fixed with a new engine. This bedroom looks like a scum pit. Your curiosity is rewarded. Under a loose board beneath the bed, you may you find quite a cash. the loot. Uh, I'm going to give it to Snake. Oh, wow. Uh, so I've got a new pistol, another clip, a leather jacket, and $20 cash. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take all of that. Do you, uh, A tearful boy watches you from the nearby bush. Brush. Do you want to talk? Yes. What do you want to ask him about? Do you need help? The kid fidgets and then shrugs. I don't know. What about High Pool? Can you tell me about this place? Um. Are you okay? leave him for now. Something will come up. The rocks are slick and mo mossy. Do not swim here. You are knee deep in high in high pool creek. The water is cool, but the rocks are slippery. So you easily cross on large stepping stones. High pool creek burbles past. It looks about two feet deep. Um, I I don't know what to do here, so I'm gonna go. Bye. <laughs> it's been it's been a pleasure. Right. Um. Oh, this is a new place.
Entering the agricultural center. Enter new location. And we will be doing that in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you all have a pleasant day.